hi there. My God, it is windy. There's no big camera today, just this small one. I'll just see if it's working. Anything else is going to get blown over and I'm back on this pasture with the horses having a lovely time. It's so nice. I've dug up a lot of cartridges today. I mean, really masses and masses and not a lot and not a lot else. Um, I've, well, actually, that's a lie, but I found this rather, love, this rather sweet little buckle. I'll show you me unearthing that now. That was deep. And I do know what it is. I've just seen it already. It's a little buckle. Not a particularly early one. Still got some sort of ferrous pin in there. That might explain a little bit of an iron buzz around it, but it was still pretty pretty obvious sign that that what i don't think many detectors would have missed that so it must have been lying pretty flat i would have thought um i reckon it's probably tudor i've never seen that design to be fair before so i'm quite pleased with that oh i'm liking these gloves as well sorry about my long fingernails i'll cut those a few bits of lead cartridges a musket ball uh, a very nice bit of big bit of pot to be fair so little bits and pieces hundreds of cartridges hundreds of bits of lead and this my god now when i'm digging so many cartridges that i can almost get to hear what they sound like i do stop digging things that sound like cartridges this was one up from a cartridge i'll show you let me put those down there um I've got the puck just sitting inside my gilet there. Now, I think you'll be, hope you'll be able to hear this through the wind. I, I would have been surprised if that had have been a cartridge. Because it just sounds a little bit too small and a bit too clipped. Now it's a silver coin. It's just what type of silver coin? Um, I'm... <laughs> I've also got these brilliant gloves. They're a bit girly, I, I, I will admit, but they, it's not cold enough for proper gloves at the moment. These just keep your hands quite a little bit warmer and you've got your fingers free to use to do all the... I don't like wearing gloves. I know I should. And a few of you have t told me to wear gloves. I just don't like wearing gloves. I prefer just to have fingers. And look at this. My God. Well, it's thick. It's too thick to be a hammered, I think. Um... I thought it might be Saxon from that side from there, but now I'm cleaning a bit of dirt off it. I think it's Roman. It's a Roman denarius. I think. A bit clipped. I don't know who that is. It is, it's a denarius. <laughs> I thought it might be Saxon, but I don't mind. And Roman silver's just as good. I've not found a denarius for a long time. By the way, very quickly, to be put with my pedant's hat on, it's a denarius. It's not a denari. A denari is the plural. If you find if you found denari, you'd be finding more than one. I hear so many people saying, I found a lovely denari. Well, no, you didn't. You found the denarius, and this is one of them. Now, it's one of the bearded lot. So it's Antoninus Pius, Marcus Aurelius, Commodus. Um, Hadrian, one of that lot. I'm not quite sure. Can't quite see. And then there's a lovely reverse of Wing Victory, I think. Um, I just, wow. Wow, wow, wow. There's a big horse just here. I've got to be a bit careful. That's just fabulous. That's made my, that's made, well, I've been out here for a bit. That's just brilliant. Brilliant. I could go home on that. But this isn't that far away. Now again, I think that's just too small to be a cartridge. And I've come to a slightly less cartridgey area as well. I think there must have been a lot of shooting going on there. Well, obviously a lot of shooting going on.
Well. Thought I had it. Thought I saw it. Yeah. It's a tiny hammered coin. It's another one. That's two silvers in about five minutes. And look. Let me just show you. I think I've got a cartridge here. Well, I know I've got a cartridge here. Hang on. Just to show the similarity. There we go. There's a little cartridge there. Sounds more high-pitched than the hammered. So... Let's have a look. Well, that is fabulous as well. My God, these are two of the best silver coins I've found back-to-back -back in ages. I think that's a little halfpenny, halfpenny. It is completely unclipped. Um, you can see all the... <laughs> You can see all the things that are going on. Um, I think it's an Edward halfpenny of sorts. I think it's too small to be a penny. And that is fabulous. <laughs> My God, wouldn't you look at that? Well, that really is. If that's it, then I don't mind. That's the two of the best silver coins I've found in donkey's years. And that's why... You've got to be a bit careful of, a, of not digging the cartridges. Um, I will stop digging cartridges because I don't want to dig up cartridges all day long. And that sounded very, very similar, even though it's a silver, medieval silver coin. Right, well, I'm going to have to put that somewhere safe as well. Don't want that being ruined. Yeah, we can put it in that pocket. My God. Well, look, let's go back to headquarters to, to have a look at those two silver coins and we can find out exactly what they are. I'll take these with me this time. Hi there, and welcome to headquarters. Well, what a, what a start. I mean, my God, two of the best silver coins I've found in a very long time, and the quality is in, in both of them is just incredible. Now, this half penny, especially in a funny sort of way, because I haven't found that many full half pennies, um, and to find one in this sort of condition is just beautiful. Now, I think I'm right in saying I did put it on the detecting hub because these are com very confusing. Um, and they got back to me um, saying it is, well, I knew it was London because you can see that from, from, from the reverse, but it's a type um, 3CD, which I think is either um, type 3C or type 3D because they're obviously very, very similar. And that makes it Edward I. Now, that means it's a very, very early half, half penny or hate penny, and it's completely unclipped. I mean, it's absolutely in the most incredible condition. Now, before you got the actual halfpenny itself, if you wanted to have a half a penny, you basically cut a full penny, like this one, like this one here, you cut a full penny in half, and that gave you your halfpenny, and then cut it again, and you get, you get a farthing. But in the reign of Edward I, you start getting proper halfpennies in their own right. Now, that's not completely true. Apparently, Henry I, some years earlier, did experiment with a halfpenny, a halfpenny. Um, but they are rare as hen's teeth. And if you find one of those, well, you, you really will be quids in. But to all intents and purposes, this was the first proper halfpenny. And it was supposed to be look here, exactly the say exactly half um, the size and weight of of a full penny. And as you can see, therein lies the difference. Um, if we go to our spink now, as I often say, get, use the detecting hub to start with um, or or something similar. I, I think the detecting hub is probably as good as it gets. Um, and, and with the information they give you, then you can go to your books, your reference, and you can start learning about it yourself. There are certain people go, please can someone identify this Roman coin for me? And you've got very obviously Hadrianus on one side. And I think to myself, come on, you know, make a bit of an effort. It's fun to make a bit, you, you, I'm sure you all do. I, mean, I, I know you all do. It's fun to make a bit of an effort and start learning how to do one, to do this oneself. But here you go. Here is my um, halfpenny. 
and alongside Ned with the first penny there, and you can see the difference there too. And here you go, type 1434A is the type they've decided to illustrate. Um, and it's a London mint as well. And there you go. I mean, it's basically that basically that coin. But so that's a really special find that in that condition and that size, I mean, just beautiful. I'm really, really pleased with that. And for me, more importantly, the Roman silver, because God, I still haven't found I still haven't found a Roman gold coin. I, I suspect I never will. And, you know, big deal. No one finds Roman gold coins or very few people. But Roman silver coins are a very close second. And this one's just fantastic. And I haven't found one of him before. It's Commodus. The infamous Commodus on one side, very clearly. On the other side, now, I've, I think because I can see beautiful wings on her and that type of dress sort of um, going back like that, sort of flailing back is very typical of, of, of winged victory um, and on the legend you can clearly read and I'll show you because I've got it here for you um, all sorts of things which very megalomanic uh, emperors like Commodus like to put you've got PMTRP which basically means Pontifex Maximus High Priest Tribune Proteste the fact that he was Tribune for 17 times um, which actually which will date it very cl clearly to 192 which was the year he died I think um, supreme commander emperor for the eighth time consul for the seventh time father of the nation and pater patriae pp at the end father of the nation now he's 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 well known commodus typically from gladiator fame which takes a lot of artistic license but you get a vague measure of the man he was emperor from 177 to 192 it's quite a long time he was the first who had the five good emperors trajan to marcus aurelius who all adopted were adopted and adopted mainly perhaps because none of them had sons but it led to um, them adopting very capable people. Um, to cut a story short, Nerva adopted Trajan, brilliant. Trajan adopted Hadrian, brilliant. Hadrian adopted Antoninus Pius, brilliant. And Antoninus Pius adopted Marcus Aurelius, brilliant. Marcus Aurelius had a son, decided, even though apparently he was a, a wise person, I wonder sometimes how wise he must have been, he, he wanted his son, Commodus, to take over, who was completely incapable and led to what was, is often seen as the beginning of the decline of the Roman Empire when he came in in 177 and he was eventually assassinated um, by his wife and members of the Senate um, and Praetorian Guard they tried to poison him but failed eventually he was strangled by a wrestler by his wrestler by his wrestling partner apparently he was very very good looking very handsome very strong um, he was obsessed by gladiatorial games um, and often took part in them himself which which you do see in the film and became more and more a bit of a nut job. He thought he was Hercules, liked to portray himself as Hercules. He wanted to rename Rome um, um, after himself. I can't remember exactly what it was, the town of Commodus or the urbanisation of Commodus. He then decided he wanted to name all the months of the year after his names. He had about 12 names, Lucius, Marcus, Aurelius, Commodus, whatever they were. And so each month had to be, I mean, he was just the most megalomanic, self-obsessed person and incredibly unpopular from all accounts. When he was finally assassinated, they issued a damnatio memoriae um, on him, which means that they just wanted his, him, him completely erased from history and they didn't want any memory of him at all. And as I said, it started, that was generally seen as the decline of the Roman em Empire starts basically starts with him, starts with this nut job. Um, but then back, look, back to the coin. I mean, it's just an incredibly special, oops, gosh, <laughs> get into trouble for doing that. You suddenly get really angry if I drop my coin. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, it's all right, not ruined, but the desk might be. Um, it's just a lovely coin and it's just a really, really good one. You've got a good portrait, you've got a really good reverse. And I'm absolutely thrilled. Just a really, really lovely bit of silver, a denarius of Commodus. Anyway, thank you very much. We find a few more nice things. Um, so let's go back to the fields.
my god it is windy so i've only got my small camera working the big one will just get blown away let's put that there i hope that stays now this is a lot this is a lovely signal if you can hear it it's faint and high pitched you can probably hear the electric fence as well it's not so bad today but this sort of sand is lovely in this field yeah don't think that's a cartridge i always go on about cartridges because there's so many I'm using the small speaker today, which means it's got to go right next to the mic in order for you to hear it. Well, I think it's still there. I don't think it's very big, a very big target. I think that's the problem. Well, it, there's a little bit coming off the pinpointer, but it's deep and it didn't sound that deep, it just sounded small. Gosh, no, that means makes me think it might be iron, deep and irony. I had no idea it was going to be this deep. I think there's two targets here. It sounded small and shallow. We're now about two foot down. No, it can't have been that. I'm going to turn this off. It's a tiny piece of lead. I don't think it's that. Well, maybe it is. I'm going to turn, turn this off and if it's any good, we'll come back. I've only got... If I'm only using one camera, I didn't have them both charged up. Well, there it... This is it after all that. That's miles down. And it's just... It's a sort of hook of sorts. Um... Now, I think it is iron, isn't it? I don't know what that is. Is it just a bent nail? It looks to be a bit more than that. But that's what it was. Two signals, a bit of lead and a bit of iron, I think. And this one's definitely been brought up by the moles. It was a double beep just on the surface. And it's a little Roman coin. Um, I think. It's a bit encrusted on the back is that a roman coin I think it's got to be gone what else it is um is that an emperor on one side yeah i can see a face now that to me looks like old claudius that sort of pointy face so that's definitely a coin even though as i said it's a bit bit encrusted on the back but that'll clean up I think hooray another little Roman and just bang on the surface of that molehill well, I'm about to get blown away uh, it's a wonder this little camera is even staying up it's on a tiny little tripod so it works quite well but my god now this was the most extraordinary signal it sounded so high pitch and I didn't live dig it because just before that I have had an equally high pitched um, signal and it was this they're these sort of I don't know quite what they are they look like big copper tops but anyway they make a bloody big noise and I don't think they're very old so I thought this was probably something similar it's not it's just a it's a it's a Roman coin um but it's a slightly earlier one so maybe it's just got a lot of bronze content or something in it um 
I can see it's for the Radiant Crown. Well, I could when I first bought it out. It looked again, looked like it looked like another one of Claudius's ones. Anyhow, there's the Radiant. Um, and if you get him in some light, you can see it. I think it's Claudius or Quintilus, his equally pointy half brother, I think. So that makes it sort of 260, 250, 260, something like that. Um, slightly earlier than the than the fourth century ones we found here last time. So my God, and I don't really want to set up for live digging unless I'm really, really sure it's something very obvious because it's just too mad out here at the moment. Gosh, the sun's come out. Well, this is absolutely bloody lovely and another fantastic thing worth coming out for. I mean, look at that. I've, I mean, I've found these sort of buckles with the... Um, knobs on them like that i don't know what you call them they're called um nodes um knob 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 nobules i can't remember um uh, what <laughs> i do know the one but it's like it's slightly chamfered on the inside there the pin looks like it might be a bit of a uh, an addition and um, it's very different it's a very different copper and, and rather crude if i'm being completely honest it looks like that that's been added i think later the original one's gone um but just look at the way it's made it's absolutely beautiful perfect medieval buckle and i suspect it's classic sort of 1250 1350. oh wow that shape i've never found before even though i have seen photographs of them before absolutely love it very very smart thing that Oof. Well, this is the perfect sound for here. Absolutely beautiful. I don't think it's a cartridge. I don't think it's a rifle round. It's just lovely. Listen. Hope you can hear it okay. I mean, that's just... That's just got to be something. It might be lead. And it's still in there, which is nice as well. Ah, come on. Yeah, it's a pistol shot or a musket ball. That's what makes that lovely sound. There are a few of those in here. Forgive not setting up the camera just too much at the moment. But this was just the tiniest buzz. I just thought there was enough about it and it's a little cut quarter now you know your machine's working when you're finding these I mean look at it absolutely minute but rather nice as well and rather good condition look god l-i-e I can't remember what that is it's the money I think um, and then probably got some well, look, isn't that lovely, lovely little bit of silver? It's the third bit of silver today. Gosh, I've had a hate penny if that's a farthing. Quarter of a penny. Um, just a, a, a very quick bit of breaking news. Um, I, got it, I got it wrong there. But I just thought you might like to know where I got it wrong and, 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 and what it does actually mean. Now, this is a cut, a little cut quarter, which is basically a farthing, a quarter of a penny. As we saw earlier, there's the penny, there's the halfpenny, um, a cut and a half, and there's the farthing like that. It's a long cross as well, which means it's all long crosses are Henry III. Um, 
off the top of my head, 242, 1242 to 1279, something like that. You get a voided long cross. I have read that it made it easier to cut when you had a voided long cross, which is the cross it goes in two, you have two lines to each cross with a, with a gap in the middle. It meant that you could actually halve and quarter them very easily. Now the Lee is not the money. The Lee is short for Angli, A-N-G-L-I. I'll show you here. This is, this is, this is in Wikipedia. Um, Angli Tersi. Um, so on some of the coins you get A-N-G-L-I-E-T-R-C-I. And it basically means the third of England. So on one side of the, of the coin you have Henricus. And then on the other side you have um, of England the third. And that's what it was. Now sometimes you get Henricus um, Ang on one side and then you get Li Te and then you get the mint after that, Lun or Can or someone for Canterbury, Lun for, for, for London. Either way, the L-I-E is not the money. You get the mint, as I've just said, London, Canterbury, whatever it may be. But um, the Lee is the Lee in Angli. It's not the, um, the money. And there you go. Lovely little, really nice little, um, little cut, cut quarter, cut farthing. Um, thank you very much. Breaking news over and let's go back to the fields. cut in half and then again to make a farthing quarter of a penny in medieval times I mean that's probably I don't know 1150 or something beautiful I think I'm just gonna go up and down here one more time and then call it a day it's just it's just almost dangerous I think I don't enjoy being out here when the wind's this mad you can't really see it but it's just crazy my God, it's like the being in the Wizard of Oz. I really think I'm going to be blown away. It's not actually that much fun. Let me just see if I can put that there. See if you can hear this. This is a lovely signal. If that's not a Roman coin, I'll eat my hat here in this field. It's little and nice sounding. And that little cut quarter gave the, the oddest, tiniest little buzz. But it's just on the top there. Ooh. There it is. I think it might be hammered. It's another little hammered coin. My God. <laughs> Four silvers today in this wind. Four silver coins, that seen better days. Now it's got the sort of quadrifoily thing in the middle, which I think is a, sort of later, isn't it? It means it's sort of probably Henry V, Henry VI, someone like that. Um, it's got the um, quite an odd looking king with mad eyes. And, and well, that, that's just bloody brilliant. I feel I've got slightly mad eyes being out in this wind. Um, we're going to call it a day very soon, but I'm thrilled with that. Four silvers. Well, it's just a hoop, a little tiny hoop in lovely condition, but my God, do they make a sound. It's almost like the dais is programmed to give objects with holes in them extra resonance. That sounded big and irony and clunky and a bit awkward, a bit jumpy. That's all it is. It's an old hoop of sorts. Don't think that's an an don't think that's an annular buckle. But it's nice and wonky. Really have got exactly the same view at the moment because um because of the wind. I've got to have my back to it, otherwise you'd never hear me. And actually this microphone works incredibly well if you've got your back to it. Um 
It's a brilliant little little machine when I've got it running. Right, last hole. I've just I can't concentrate. The wind's driving me slightly potty. So hopefully you will hear this. It's very ballsy. I suspect it's a cartridge. Sounding like that. It's been a really wonderful day. Just a cracking day for finds. Just a bit mad. It, it's just, you don't really want to stay out when it's like this. Well, some people might. Some people might, I, I don't. I'm a fair weather detectorist. I enjoy it when it's nice. Right, it's right on the top. I bet my life it's a cartridge. Every day of the week, I'm afraid, but we need something to finish on. <sighs> Crikey, I don't know what it is. It's not a cartridge. It's a bit of copper alloy or bronze. I mean, God knows what that is. Um, it's definitely old. Um, I've never quite, I never, I, I just don't know. Um, it looks, it's, it's something, but I just don't know. I'm not going to get the camera out. I think we're going to call it a day there. Well, thank you very much for joining me. That was good fun. Just slightly too much now. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>